Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Loading. In this episode, let's talk about um, how to create maze in Blender. So basically, you can start from scratch or you can find like um, an add-on like this one that's already been created by Elfnor. And you actually have two options. Um, there's the older versions that's actually made for Fairchalk uh, script node. And I'm pretty sure I haven't really touched on this. I might actually talk about this at some point, but anyhow, I wanna touch it again. And there is a newer one, which is like um, just an add-on for Blender. And either way is actually fine, and you will find them interesting if you want to create maze. So I will demonstrate uh, both of them. So for Blender add-on, you simply go to basically get the go to the github you read the documentation go to the github and then just download the zip once you download the zip you just do the installation file user preference add-on and just uh, install add-on so that should be like a something that you can do yourself um, I'll give a demonstrations of the of the add-on so basically if you have like a, a mesh um, this box, I'll go inside, I'll hit tab, and then subdivide it. And subdivide it a couple of times, so we have mesh with uh, some details. Once we got this, um, and with the add-ons already installed, you just tap spacebar and then type maze. Maze on mesh uh, selections, and this one will generate mesh. And at this point, you can actually still kind of adjust the parameters. Um, let's see. So you can you can randomize the the maze. If I'm not wrong, so I hit Z and then can kind of switch between the the different um, viewer. So here you can. Yeah, randomize the seed, uh, turn on the braiding. Um, there's option for thick or thin wall. And advanced options, uh, you can try it yourself. There's a width control. If you hold shift, you can control the width a little bit better. Um, all that, the extrusion of the wall, all the fancy stuff. And then you can hit tab and basically you get this maze it's pretty cool um, basically that's a that's if you use the um, the add-on some actually a lot of uh, some blender artists prefer to use um, an add-on because it's just a once-off thing once you're done you know you get a what you want so that's fine but I like to also show the spare chop one which is um, this one right here um, on this uh, blog post you can read through and then follow through the whole setup but I'll give you the demo anyway so you go to the github as well for this guy and download the the github uh, script node so once again you you just go to the github where is a github link click on github and then clone or download download uh, the script and you're gonna get like a bunch of script here mazes master and I'll find it on my download folder mazes master I think this is the one it's actually the script from from 2016 and we are nearly like 2018 and the script still works fine you have uh, this one maze mesh that's the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna switch to compositing. I'm gonna switch this one to text editor so we can drag and drop our uh, script for spare chalk script note. So file save as save it as SV maze and Maybe I'll turn off Chrome. Comp 
compositing, spread job, text editor, new. So let's get to the downloads. Drop it there. Script node. Get our script. Plug it in. And save this. SV maze 001. So we can we can try this now and use just a let's try with a plane 2D plane. Plug this in. Um, you can plug the edges and vertices and faces. Um, let's try all of them and viewer draw the first one will actually give you the maze right away and this is something that you can you can simply bake and then you use a skin modifier and if you like it you can smooth it then so that's uh, one way you can create this. Um, you can also create like a 3D objects. So let's try. Actually, let's try with the hexagrid first. Let's see if this one works. Hexagrid doesn't seems to be working. Anyhow, let's use a 3D box. And increase the subdivisions, increase the size so there you go we have another maze being generated on the fly so I really like this kind of method um, the other output from this script um, let's let's check it out what it is so path vertices, path edges for this one can be more useful if it's a face and then bake it out. This is actually kind of more useful, I think, if you use a spare chop because you can use the extrusion or use a, just a solidify. Oh, actually, I prefer the extrusion. Extrude region from this guy right here, vertices, polygon. So this might take a while to process. Mm. Yep, okay, that's done. Plug in the polygons. Yeah, probably I think the extra region may be taking a while in this case or actually the maze might be the one that's taking a while um, but let's just wait for a few seconds heavy computations um, seems to be completed but I don't like the speed on that so I think if we are doing it like this, just bake it out. We can just uh, simply um, use a solidify. And this guy should give us a solid kind of maze puzzle. So this is also pretty cool. And this is quite a nice pattern. So there's like, uh, thanks to Elfnor of course, this one is has the, the algorithm that you can use um, to generate something like this and you can just simply profile like a 3D mesh and it will do the hard job for you and this is currently lo looks looking more like a cage but you can also go to the in inside of the 3D if you if you provide it with a kind of like a meshing inside it um, that's probably for the next live modding, but that's uh, you get the idea. 
if we use the script node in Spreadshock, you can you can create something like this pretty easily. Um, box will work, and then you can also use all other like a generator. So it's you see it's a uh, this one also pretty interesting. Um, Icosphere can get pretty heavy. Be careful. But there you go. This Icosphere actually looking quite nice. Let's increase it and then see this one is quite nice. Uh, we can adjust the offset and get a quite interesting pattern very very easily. Something like that is very unusual. Wow, I quite like this actually. So yeah, so I, I think I'm gonna stop there, but hopefully you find this interesting and useful. You can try it yourself definitely and generate some interesting pattern maybe for you to print out or you, you know just for a design. Um, yeah, so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.